and in this video I would like you to participate as viewers at the end of the video I would like maybe uh, five things uh, to be accomplished and one of them is you as a viewer to decide whether Louis Riel was a Canadian hero or not and second whether he was a freedom fighter or a rebel and three whether the history of Canada should be rewritten to reflect the views of the indigenous people of Canada because we know that um, it is a one-sided history okay and you will know why because he, Canada was established as a colony okay it was colonized and so the history is written to reflect the victor just like in every other country that was colonized and number four whether we should celebrate this holiday with, with this true meaning reflecting um, Louis, Louis Riel himself or not and number five which is very very important is that, uh, that I would encourage you to delve deeper into the history of Canada or this country called Canada is a great beautiful country that has gone under the radar for many many years and uh, it's very fascinating to me and I might be the right person to kind of talk about Canada and why would I be the right person it's because I consider myself a social observer a commentator and interpreter of social events and a storyteller and I would like to tell the story of Canada as best as I can from both sides especially the untold side okay I am Jamburi and I'm here to share my international experiences build bridges between cultures with the hope of making the world a better place Today is February 19th, 2024, and it is a holiday here in Canada, uh, throughout Canada and in Manitoba, uh, here in this province, it is uh, Ru Louis Riel Day. And I will attempt to delve into this day and to share information about who Louis Riel was in the history of Canada. And the reason why I do this video is every year since uh, 2008 when this uh, province was, um, I mean, when this day was established, there was an, everybody was invited to, to contribute how this day was going to be named. And at the end, I believe the school children um, managed to, to win. And they call this day Louis Riel Day. And Louis Riel has a lot to do with the establishment of, of Manitoba. There's some very rich history in Manitoba. And the reason why I also do would like to do this video is because since 2008, when this uh, holiday was named Louis Riel Day, I have not really witnessed a lot being talked about uh, concerning Louis Riel. We just get together, maybe do a festival that has nothing to do with Louis Riel Day. It uh, coincides or with um, a winter festival in the area that I, I live in and we celebrate cultures and, um, and not much is mentioned about Louis Riel. And if you stay at home and do your own thing, it's a quiet day. And in many parts of the world, when a day is celebrated, let's say Canada Day or any other day, uh, people are quite aware what happened on that day. Or if it's named after a certain person, prominent person, it would be well known what the legacy of that person is. But it's a bit different with Louis Riel. And I've been really fascinated by him because he, it's, he's part of the history of this province that I 
I, I live in. And I also lived in the city of Winnipeg. And around that area is the Red River or St. Boniface area, which is an hour drive from here. And the history of Louis Riel and his people, as I will share in this video, is where this happened. And I have been in that area and I've walked there. And later on when um, somehow this story of the character of Louis Riel came into my life, I really set my mind up that one day I'm going to follow the footsteps of Louis Riel and f see how his life unfolded because the history of Canada is very well tied to the Red River, to the area where he grew up in. The story of Louis Riel is tied to the first Prime Minister of Canada, John MacDonald, who uh, served in Canada for two terms from 1867, which today in uh, 2024 would be around 160 years. And uh, it's a very interesting relationship between uh, Pre uh, Prime Minister Macdonald and Louis Riel. Canada at that time was not united as we know it today. And it started from Eastern Canada and expanded all the way to Western Canada in uh, British Columbia. And um, we see, I will have to talk about colonization when I talk about Canada. And at this time, um, Canada was being uh, colonized by the French <laughs> and the English. And there was um, a, a rivalry there that happened. And at the end, the English people ruled Canada and expanded westwards. And there was, it was, there was a lot of resistance um, from Louis Riel people and who is Louis Riel and who are his people. Louis Riel and his people are considered the Métis nation of Canada and they are made up of uh, indigenous women who had children with uh, Europeans and in this case the French who had come also to settle in Canada at that time. And so as Macdonald uh, Prime Minister Macdonald ex expanded westwards to acquire more territory for the monarchy or the British Empire. The native people resisted. And in Manitoba, the Métis chose Louis Riel as their leader because Louis Riel had been to Montreal and he was studying there. He was more familiar with that kind of life a little bit, the political life a little bit. But it's also said that Louis Riel was reluctant to go into politics. He had studied theology to become a priest. And so in this time, Prime Minister Macdonald sent a surveyors to come and charter uh, the, the territory of Manitoba and um, wanted to settle the English people into Manitoba. And in this story, I will refer also to the similarity or the kinship between Louis Riel and the Métis people and a group of people in Kenya that are so similar because I'm trying to build bridges and to bring an understanding because I live in, I've lived in two worlds, Canada and Kenya. And there's a great similarity in the establishment of this country or those two countries uh, by the British and has a big influence that way. So I will compare Louis Riel legacy with the legacy of a, a Mau Mau pe people of Kenya who also resisted the British at this time when they were expanding into the territory. And so something that is very common in in the colonization story is a foreign power comes into a country and finds good land that the people already settled in and they want that farm to bring other foreigners to settle in. 
And you can see this in the story of many colonized countries that the good land is then taken over and the native people of that country are pushed into what I call the bad lands. And just as a side note, I will be doing in the future a video on what I call the colonization template, which one day just I understood very well the game of colonization. That was a, it's a set of a strategies that has been used for every colonized country. And it works very well for the colonizer to the a very great disadvantage of the local people. And so Louis Riel resisted this expansion and his people resisted the expansion. And Prime Minister MacDonald was not going to have it. So he sent troops to come and uh, uh, <laughs> stop this, what he called rebellion. Okay. And after resisting this, it is a long story, so I'm going to summarize it. Louis Riel had to flee into Saskatchewan with these people because at the end they were defeated and they had to, to flee. But at this time also there was um, a shooting in this conflict and um, Louis Riel is uh, blamed for the killing of one of the officials of of the British government okay one of, and so also going back a little bit Louis Riel and his people tried to negotiate with uh, McDonald Prime Minister McDonald in the establishment of Canada it was a really monstrous uh, <laughs> event uh, with these uh, people who've lived in the country peacefully and then you have a mighty power trying to take over their land and and they had to resist. But in the establishment of, of Manitoba, his, uh, the Métis people elected Louis Riel to be their member of parliament. And there were some deals that... Uh, that he made with uh, Prime Minister McDonald. But at the end, Prime Minister McDonald um, did not hold his side of the bargain. And that caused, again, a lot of friction. You know, it is so important that people keep their word. So I would like you also to look up the legacy of Prime Minister McDonald, the first Prime Minister of Canada. Anyway, things fell apart in this in this uh, in this agreement, and um, Louis Riel and his group felt that they were not um, that they were lied to, okay, and so they continued resisting. But at this time, also the uh, prime minister was expanding the railway. So this is fast forward, you know. And by the time they reached Saskatchewan, you know. Louis Riel had moved with these people to a city or an area called Beloche and had settled there and quietly and did their own thing. But Prime Minister MacDonald did not leave them in peace. He wanted to make sure that this, what he called rebellion, is, is silence for good. And so um, at the end, there was a lot of conflict between the two. And finally... Um, Louis Riel was captured and tried for treason, okay? This is a very complicated point and uh, it may seem that I'm biased in this video, but some things are very imbalanced in the story because also there were a lot of, in this time there had been a lot of uh, deaths of the indigenous people in the hands of maybe uh, the army and through the settlement process and in this point Louis Riel nevertheless paid a very huge price and it is taught in, in the Canadian history in schools that it's because he he shot one man okay who was a, a, an official of the Canadian government. And for that, Louis Riel 
had to lose his life. So I would like you, maybe not take it from me as a storyteller, but delve more into this story so that it can help you decide what I requested you to do at the beginning of this video. And at this point too, I would like, in case I forget later on, to say that if you are a newcomer in this country and you are settling in this beautiful country of Canada, to really learn the history of this Canada, uh, of Canada so that you can appreciate this country the way it has become and the price that the indigenous people of this country have had to pay for this country to be here the way we are now and they are still paying and that the traumas of this time also have come to haunt Canada. And going back to 2021, 2020 and 2020 is another legacy of this time because a lot of graves of missing indigenous children were discovered all over Canada. And the indigenous people were very, very angry because the residential schools are tied to Prime Minister McDonald in order to um, get the indigenous people to settle into Canada and do things the British way and uh, to brainwash them into not living their own culture anymore, but to live as civilized people, to move from being savages to civilized people. Many children were taken away from their families and put into residential schools at a young age, very, very young age, so that uh, they can easily be, you know, brainwashed. And that is the damage that has happened to the indigenous people up to today, because many that survived this system went through a lot of abuse within the residential schools. And later on, when they became parents, they had no parental models. Those people in those schools that were supposed to be looking after them, uh, it is told that they physically abused the children and erase, tried to erase their language. They were punished for speaking their language. And their long hair was cut. You can look at pictures. All these children had short hair. And that is a very big insult to the native people of Canada, the indigenous people, because they pride themselves up to today for wearing their long hair all the way to their backs. And a friend of mine, I asked her once, you know, why don't you cut your hair? She said, for them, it is a spiritual thing to grow their hair long and to keep it that way. So a lot of things happened that were not good in that, in the residential schools. And so that trauma, then later on when the kids when uh, left the schools and became parents, they had no idea how to become a parent. Okay, they've, they've grown up there in the schools. And so that trauma kept being uh, passed from generation to generation up to today. There is a lot of healing that Canada still has to do. So going back to 2020, the discovery of these graves uh, outraged the indigenous people. And uh, they were angry at Prime Minister McDonald, who had been <laughs> um, dead for many years, but they toppled his statues. Okay, In Quebec also, they toppled to the ground. They were very angry and wanted to, you know, and blamed him for the establishment of the residential schools. And in Winnipeg, Manitoba, not far from here, also the the statue of Queen Victoria was toppled because she's she was also tied as the monarch, uh, reigning monarch during the time of Prime Minister Macdonald. And so this is these are things that I think the government of Canada would love so much to to forget, you know and the people who are pro that system would love so much to forget,
but it is not going away. It is not going away. And if you look at uh, the videos, I've made about three or four videos about the Indigenous people of Canada. And I would encourage you to also visit those videos, watch them so you it can be a, a holistic approach to this, what happened. And I reported about uh, the plight of the children of Indigenous uh, people, of the Indigenous people in the residential schools. And so this has come to haunt Canada up to today. And I would like to ask you, now having studied this or heard this story to begin to consider what you how to conclude this story on your point of view and in the future um louis riel day let's say 20 2025 going forward how should we handle this day <laughs> because it is a very very low-key um holiday and now i, I just want to close with the Mau Mau people of Canada, of Kenya, okay, where I grew up. I grew up in the 60s fearing the Mau Mau people because we were told they're really bad people. I mean, like people, it was like the things that made the horror stories. And I grew up fearing them so much, even the mention of these people were like, whoa, it's like they were lurking all over in the, in the woods, in the forest. And where I grew up, there was a great a lot of forests around area. There are a lot of bushes. And I, I grew up being very fearful that they might show up. <laughs> and this had happened in the past. That was around 1952. But the British had also colonized Kenya. And this group of people, they called themselves the Mau Mau. They resisted the the, uh, the British from taking their land and they were labeled rebel, rebels and also uh, Kenyan people were recruited to hunt them down and to betray them and to hand them over to the British and if they did not do that they got punished and so there's uh, the history of Kenya also is similar to this and so many Kenyans uh, were confused about the Mau Mau. Okay, were they good people? Were they bad people? But in the last five or ten years, this story of the Mau Mau um, has come up again because the survivors are wanting compensation. They're talking about the atrocities that happened to them, uh, the surviving people. They talk about really, really, really bad things that happened. And the Kenyan people are beginning to understand the role of the Mau Mau, that they were, according to them, they were resisting the British from taking their land and pushing them out into the bad lands and taking the land by force as a foreign invader, as a colonizer. And uh, the story of the Mau Mau is alive and well in Kenya at this time. And I think the people of Kenya are starting now to really understand what happened uh, during the British colonization uh, at the height of it and why uh, we were made to fear them. And now fast forward, were they rebels or were they the heroes that uh, stood up against uh, the British? And at this point, I would ask you as an individual, what would you do? What would you do if a uh, uh, a foreign invader would come to your home. Let's make it personal. Come to your home uh, with uh, soldiers and in the name of the king, uh, whoever it is, and claims that, you know, puts their flag down and say, this land, this house from now on is uh, belongs to my boss, okay? And they would throw you out of the house don't care how you survive, but they claim the land and take it away. How would you react? How would you react? And so I think I'll end this story here. And for me as a storyteller, it is very, very important to, uh, I see a lot of similarity. When I live in Canada, 
there's always so much that I learn from this country that helps me understand my own the history of my own country of birth. And these stories are so captivating. And I realize, you know, this this uh, history of a colonialism, actually, or colonization, we we would for a long time we thought it was over. And it is not over. It is not over. And in 2024, I would dare to say that what we see happening in in between Israel, Israel and Palestinians also has overtones of colonization. The whole template is happening, is, is in play there. So if you really, if you grew up not knowing what colonization is, and if you would love to forget colonization, you would just need to look at the, the present history, what is unfolding in, in Israel and Palestine, and what happened in South Africa. South Africa just got what we call, it's, it's really not fully recovered from from the from uh, colonization and how are we going to to go forward you know i think that we need to acknowledge i would like to say confidently that a lot of the troubles we see today in the world the traumas that people have uh, you know let's say a lot of um african people a lot of indigenous people they are kind of like carry a silent um trauma and if you uh, and a a problem i, I call it um identity crisis identity crisis and it's because of this forceful uh colonization that really shifted people's identity in terms of language okay they had to to be forced to speak a foreign language and to make it their national language and many people lost their languages it they lost their culture also and uh or maybe you know had to put on uh, a foreign culture and language and way of dressing they also had uh, to get rid of their religions and they put on a new or took up a new religion let's say in this case christianity that denied or tried to abolish or write off the practices the religious practices of indigenous peoples and it made itself a prominent religion and so many people lost their identity through this and the next thing is education education um, and the curriculum is written from the foreign perspective and fed to their locals so that uh, actually people have forgotten who they are and uplifted a foreign culture and education of a western country okay a foreign country and in the meantime in 2024 starting a few years ago let's say in the case of africans they are st starting to look for their identity and ask themselves who they really are because they are uh, have all these things that i i um i mentioned and they are displaced in their culture they're, they live in two cultures, their own culture and in the foreign culture. And um, many of them like to present more of the foreign culture than their culture. And their names also, they've lost names, except their father's names or their family names. Many carry foreign names, which uh, do not mean much. Because uh, let's say the same thing with all indigenous people. They have their names uh, based on, named based on, on their culture maybe the environment maybe the seasons maybe whatever it has a meaning but uh, they were renamed and given foreign names and that changes <laughs> changes things for people and so i think that right now in 2024 a lot of indigenous peoples are awakening to who they truly are who what is their history what is their history what is their true history and I'm following also stories from Africa and, uh, and I'm seeing that there is, there is a call to rewrite history because they feel that they have been falsely represented as if uh, the history of Africa began only from colonization going forward. But there is Africa, for instance, before colonization or other countries before colonization. 
And I feel that uh, the more people go back and really discover who they are and how great they were as a people before uh, colonization. And when they went back, their identity, I believe that the world will not be the same again. It will not be the same again because identity, true identity of a person is very, very powerful. And I can see that going forward from 2024, we will see the stories, the history of people being rewritten and we will see histories we've never seen before. And we will also see that um, this system of colonization is being dismantled, actually. And how is it being dismantled? It's because it's being outed. Okay, it's being outed. Let's say in 2024, when South Africa went to the International Court of Justice to say, you know what, uh, what is going on is not okay. And um, people standing up who've never stood before because they understand finally who they are and they're resisting this system that is not going to be moved forward anymore. It's enough and enough. And so it is very important for me to share this story. And um, just because this story chose me, okay, I don't go sitting there and saying, what story should I tell today? You know? An event happens and a story just unfolds before me and and I am fortunate to be able to understand events uh, of history and uh, political events and cultural events um, I would say these are the areas uh, my, my strength areas okay I am a multicultural person I, I understand religions uh, understand countries and, and, and politics and all these things come together for me in an easy way and so and I enjoy telling stories so they all come to me and I just am an instrument of sharing these stories and it's because I would like the world to be better than we know it now and going future because I believe that we can really coexist in a beautiful beautiful way and um, it is important to tell this story. And so I think I will end here. And if you like these stories, I would like you to um, share it with other people. I give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll be telling a lot of different stories um, depending on what story calls me. But it's all about building bridges of understanding between cultures, between countries, between religions, so that we as humanity can, can get closer and maybe find a, hope, a way of resolving these issues that have divided us for generations and generations. And I wish each and every one of us who has been affected by colonization because it did not just affect indigenous peoples, it affected everybody, everyone. And um, I wish us healing and understanding and uh, that we can work together to resolve the trauma of colonization. Until next time. Thank you for being here.